This is a hard video to make because I know just the title alone is going to make everyone upset. The goal is not to make anyone upset, but to provide a healthy conversation on where we can go from here. Try to find a middle ground, try to understand. I post a ton of guides for us to really always improve and take things a step further, and I think this is a healthy discussion that we all need to take into account. Just remember my word is not law, but another voice to add to the conversation. This video is very fitting because of the removal of tap strafing that's going to come in a future patch. And I know this all comes down to opinions on direction, but I want to try to look at things from all angles and try to come up with something that really adds to the discussion so we understand where we can go from here. So what we're going to cover is why every input should be respected and my opinion on it. The controller learning curve, mouse and keyboard learning curve, controller pros and cons, mouse and keyboard pros and cons, controller versus keyboard movement, tap strafing being removed in my honest thoughts, controller and keyboard competing against each other. So let's break this down. First off, let's start with respect. This is something that kind of frustrates me just personally. To have a healthy discussion, this first point is most important. That respect is always put on the table so we can work on taking things from the next step. And this is really on any input. When there's no respect, then nobody wants to listen. It's really what separates us from being beast in the wild. So regardless of how easy or difficult you feel something is, if someone is passionate or puts time into something, you should put some respect on, on what they're doing. I, 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 that's as simple as that, I guess, from my opinion. If someone used a steering wheel to play Apex Legends, we would all be in awe because it's something that would be odd or different. But if it was used in competition, it definitely deserves some respect because of the effort put behind it. Will it need to be buffed or nerfed? Well, that requires a healthy discussion and conversation of what this video is all about. So let's talk about controllers. Let's talk about the learning curve. And remember, as I talk about this is opinion based, but also what I found online, especially from my experience. Controllers are harder to learn, but easier to master. Now, mouse and keyboard is easier to learn, but harder to master. So now why is this? Mouse and keyboard has been memed as a point and click, meaning it's easy. You just grab the mouse and point and click. But as you put thousands of hours into it, it can be difficult to master. When we say master, we're discussing the hours to become a pro and the mindset to improve. With mouse and keyboard, there's just a lot of variables that require understanding, such as the type of mouse, mouse pad, sensitivity, DPI, mouse gates, mouse weight, and much more. With controllers, it can be difficult to just pick one up and be good initially. It's a different input and you're using your full hand on said controller. But the whole point of controller is also accessibility. That's where we all started, especially when we started gaming. So it definitely is easier or difficult at first, but it gets easier to master once you get comfortable, right? That's the whole point of the controller to where it creates an equal playing field later. Now, the problem with this statement that I'm calling myself out on is that this is all subjective and depends on the user, right? But this argument I have seen that I can understand. When we say easier or harder, that can still be only a minor variance or difference, right? We're talking maybe a bit of a percentage one way or the other, depending on the user. Now, the pros to use a controller would be the accessibility with less variables on a mouse and keyboard. The other pro is the aim assist that can help your aim. So if those who do not understand aim assist, aim assist is a game subtle way of helping controller players hit their target since it's normally quite difficult to maintain accuracy with analog sticks as opposed to a mouse and keyboard. That is the cons of the controller is a difficulty to maintain accuracy, especially at long or extended medium long range encounters. It can be quite difficult. And the same thing applies if you're too close, because then when does aim assist actually pick up? And if you're using a certain sensitivity, how difficult it can be to maintain the speed and momentum of a target. But also another con would be maintaining multiple inputs in, in one time. You can use a different grip style if you're on controller to improve this, such as a claw grip to hit multiple inputs. And also for a con of controller is that it's not necessarily always the most comfortable to utilize. It's not as ergonomic, especially the way you're in, encouraged to sit on a mouse and keyboard and utilize it. Now, the pros of mouse and keyboards are that having the ability to input multiple inputs at a specific time while having aim be a separate component with your mouse, you have the flexibility and precision that the controller does not. This gives mouse and keyboard the nice sweet spot of long range and sometimes really, really close range to speed up and maintain a target. 
It's where controllers will succeed at a specific distance depending on aim assist levels. This means controller players will lean towards certain sensitivities depending on how aim assist is also coded. So this can be also a con of controller as well. But the downside is the amount of variables and having these variables can take a much longer time to master, especially if you have to understand them. But also they cause bad habits that can produce bad gameplay results on mouse and keyboard. And I've seen this also firsthand. These again are some of the high level pros and cons. We can go into more detail, but I think these are some of the biggest ones that really matter. Now the discussion is controller versus mouse and keyboard movement. It can be replicated on controller, but you also need to do some programming or spend an extensive amount of time to really achieve it. And if you do achieve it after the extended period of time, and I've seen a lot of controller players really master this, is that it can require an unergonomic way of playing. Like an example would be tap strafing. What if we made it more accessible for controller players and make it easier to do? Moving while looting. What if there was a button that automatically did moving while looting for you? Or the ability to hit multiple inputs in one time. I guess like a macro on a controller. Now, all these are controversial suggestions because then would it be too easy? Or is it requiring too much time to code to make these features accessible such as this movement would be harder to do on mouse and keyboard? Then it turns into the question, is it accessible for those that aren't willing to put in the time into mouse and keyboard and does it make sense to even add it to the game as a tutorial, such as the coveted scroll wheel or moving buttons for more comfort? This means that a number of inputs is larger and that mixes direction can be near impossible again for controller. And I say near impossible because we have some crazy results from controller players that I've seen firsthand. So remember, the number of inputs really, really matters of what you can do in one time. So now let's talk about tab strafing. Long story short, I'm gonna miss it. I love Apex Legends for the movement and it's something I find even relaxing or soothing just to do in the test range. I wish there was a more middle ground to provide controller players the ability to do it even, but then it makes you again, like I said, question, how do we make sure that the whole player base on mouse and keyboard understand how to utilize this mechanic? It becomes a slippery slope and I took a lot of time thinking about it, but I find movement mechanics like this really unique to games. Like an example would be Super Smash Bros. Melee and wave dashing. It's something I love and if they removed it from the game, it just kind of ruins that extra reward of learning something and then it feels devalued. It does not mean I won't be saddened by the loss. It doesn't mean that I'm not unjustified in the way I feel. And it does not mean that other people aren't right for wanting it to be removed. That's just my own personal opinion and how I played the game. Especially because Apex Legends is so much known for movement, I really love the movement on Apex compared to any game I have ever played. It's just so unique. So I know I'm still allowed to feel sad, but now for the difficult part, can controller players and mouse and keyboard players play together at a high level such as tournaments? Well, in a perfect world, they would lower aim assist to tad and provide controller players the ability to tap strafe. Like we had just mentioned, if we went through each point and said this, controller players have coded the ability to tap strafe while looting, moving, and increased movement, while mouse and keyboard benefits as aim assist has been lowered from controller players, it would be a nice trade-off. But then we run into the issue of losing the skill gap. If Apex Legends does it, I don't know any other game that has found this balancing act between these two inputs, which is also why the current discussion exists. My standpoint is this. If we can find a middle ground, can there be the results where these two inputs live together? It takes those or these videos to really hash this out and talk about the pros and cons and find a balance. I hope you guys understand the difficulty of this conversation, but the respect I'm putting for both controller players and mouse and keyboard. I personally would love to see it balanced out, but maybe I'm living in a pipe dream. So let me know in the comment section, am I asking for too much? Am I being unrealistic by wanting to see both inputs? Is there a way where if, imagine this was a graph, we were to find a perfect middle point to where everything just felt for the most part perfectly balanced? Comment down below, let me know, leave a like if I did a decent job of explaining this. I tried to be fair on all ends. I put my opinion where I felt my opinion mattered, but I also, I wanted to keep an open conversation and debate about this because again, this hasn't been done before. And if it hasn't been done before, it's really hard for somebody to come in and say, it deserves to stay this one way or the other, especially since we haven't seen a game specifically find this balancing act. So I guess we'll leave it off at that note. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video.